Okay, we have a 2006 Nissan Murano with the 3.5 V6 and the alternator is not working. They put a brand new battery in, um, I guess thinking that that was the problem and the battery still runs down. Still have a battery light. I think that's why they put the uh, battery in because with the engine running, it will eventually bring the battery light on. In fact, I'm surprised it's not on right now. So I'm going to get my multimeter just headed across the uh, battery post and we're going to see what it shows. Okay, so this, this was handier for me to grab than the multimeter, so I'm just going to use it because it, it says the actual voltage. So I'm going to hook it up here. 12.22 volts. It's got a battery test, brand new battery, so I'm sure it's going to be good. Let's go to charging test. Press enter to press, please start engine, press enter to continue. We got a 6 millivolt ripple, that looked great. We know the alternator's not charging, so I'm sure this is going to fail. Now it says increase RPM. I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and hit test. And it's saying no output from alternator. We've only got, uh, now we're down to 12.19, 12.2 roughly. So alternator's definitely not charging. Let's see if we got a battery light. Yeah. Yes. See the battery light right there and I think that's why they put a battery in it because a lot of people think that when the battery light comes on it means your battery's bad that's typically not the case usually it's the alternator I don't know why they uh, have always put battery lights there that should actually be like a little alternator light or something but anyway alternators buried down in there before we change it I want to definitely make sure that our inputs are all good but uh, I think I'm going to take this, all this shroud stuff off. These pins are already removed. This one's broke. So this should be pretty simple. I'm just going to take these out. I'm going to get this out of my way. I'm going to get this out of my way. I'm going to need those out of the way anyway if I end up having to replace the alternator. But the reason I'm taking them out right now is just to give me access, easier access down to the alternator. So I want to get a little tool, pop these out of there, get these out of our way. Now you can typically use a screwdriver to get these. They just pop up, pop out like that. Okay guys, I got all this shroud off and it opened it up a little bit. You can see down there now, uh, there's the connector that I need to get to. There's the B positive, we're gonna check that. First thing I'm gonna do, the easiest thing that's gonna be uh, able to be done is the B positive, make sure it's got 12 volts and make sure the case of the alternator is showing uh, a solid connection to ground. So, just give you an idea of the diagram and how this thing's wired. There's the alternator. It's showing a wire actually going to a terminal E and it's showing a ground right here. So I don't know if there's another wire. I, I look as much as I could see of the alternator. I didn't see another wire. There's the B positive. It goes straight up to the battery. It goes through a fusible link. The S terminal is hot at all times. So it should have power. If I unplug the connector it should have power. The uh, indicator charge uh, light is the L terminal, so we're going to have to disconnect that and make sure that that uh, is intact also. Now we do have a light. When I turn the key on, the battery light does illuminate, and I think I showed whenever it's running, um, within about two minutes the battery light comes on. That kind of tells me this circuit would have to be, would have to be good. But nonetheless, I don't want to change this alternator and find out we got the same problem. So I'm going to make sure that all these are good. 
So what we need to do now is I'm going to use this long screwdriver in my test light to reach down there. I'm going to have to be careful that I don't short that screwdriver against anything because I'm going to reach down there and I'm going to hit that positive terminal. Uh, is that coming through? Yeah. That positive terminal right there, that's a direct connection to the battery. So you don't want to short it. Let me get set up here. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to connect my test light to battery ground. Touch the other end to the positive to make sure that my test light does work. I'm going to take my screwdriver here. Reach down without touching anything else. And I want to make sure that we got 12 volts to that B positive terminal. Now I'm going to go to battery positive with the end of my test light. I'm going to do the same thing, but I'm going to just reach down. I'm going to touch the, just the case of the alternator and make sure that we've got a good solid ground. So the case and the B positive are definitely connected. So now I've got to get that connector off and since I can't really reach down there to do that what I'm going to do is just tug. I don't know how much of this you're going to be able to see. Probably not a lot. I'm going to tug on the wire while I depress the connector latch. And there's the, uh, there's the connector. And the reason you want to make sure of this, if you had a, if you had a wire issue and you went through all the trouble to uh, change the alternator, that's a lot of work to find out that a brand new alternator and all the work you put into it didn't fix the problem. T-pin works. Get you a little box of these. Very handy. And we're looking for 12 volts, so I need to make sure that I'm on ground with my test light. I'm going to make sure my test light lights. And according to that, let's see, the yellow and black. These wires are so discolored. Can't tell which one's yellow, which one's black. Okay, we do have solid 12 volts on. Let's see if that's plugged on there. That was that. Where's my light? Okay, that is yellow and black. So on the yellow and black wire, we have a solid 12 volts even with the ignition off. Now to check that one. So to check this one, what you got to do is put your test light to ground. So I've got it connected to battery ground. You can see we got a little bit of illumination right there. That means the circuit is intact. We should have a battery light on the dash. Here's the other end of the test light. And if I disconnect the ground, so I'm just going to disconnect it right here. The light's out. So that tells you that that circuit is good all the way from the fuse through the indicator circuit all the way to the alternator so this circuits good this circuits good this circuit is good and we're grounded at the case now I'm going to look real quick just to see if I can find a separate ground wire coming off of it I don't think there is one but nonetheless uh, the case is grounded we're showing a case ground right here it's showing a wire, but I don't see another wire. Let me take a, let me take a better look. 
All right, guys, so I, I did confirm that there is not another ground wire going to this alternator. All you have is the B positive, and then you got the one connector that has both these wires, and then, of course, the case ground from it being bolted to the engine. But anyway, we've confirmed that this alternator is bad. All the wiring is intact. The only thing it can be is alternator. So the next thing is going to be me replacing this alternator. Now the one other thing that you want to do before you just go buy your alternator is verify your belt's good. Um, you can generally look down there. Okay, this belt actually looks pretty good. It looks like it's in decent shape. What you're looking for is right there. If you look at those ribs and if, if they're not cracked, you're probably going to be fine. If you see cracks in those ribs, go ahead and get you a belt. Because you don't want to get to this point, get the alternator all unbolted, uh, find out, well, I need a belt. Now you're running back up to the auto parts store to get a belt and coming back to put the belt on. You may want to go ahead and get a belt anyway. But anyway, this thing needs an alternator, uh, so that'll be the next part to this uh, video. This will probably be one video if you want to verify whether the alternator is bad and then the other parts going to be replacing this alternator now the manual tells you to remove the fans and the radiator more than likely that's what's going to have to happen I don't know I don't know if it can actually be done without removing the radiator the fans are definitely going to have to come off but I, I, I might try it first without removing the radiator. The only reason I don't want to have to remove the radiator is because not only do you have the upper radiator hose and stuff, but you've got uh, lines down on the bottom. I believe I, you probably have transmission lines connected to it, too, and I don't want to have to disconnect those. The fans, I think, will pull right up. This radiator hose will have to come off, then the fans pull up and out of here. And, and I can't tell just by looking at it. I mean, it's obviously going to be close. I can't tell if it will actually come out of here or not without removing the radiator. But we're going to try it. It definitely will not come out of the bottom. I look down there. There's a uh, cross member and too much stuff. So we're going to have to pull this out through the top. Anyway, till then.